from Wish TV and the All Indiana Podcast Network. This is the News 8 Daily 8 Podcast. A Wish TV News 8 update. Hello, I'm Jeremy Jenkins, and this is your News 8 Daily 8 Podcast for Thursday, August 8th. Have you ever covered a carpet stain with a rug? Ignored a leaky faucet? Pretended your half-painted living room is supposed to look like that? Well, you're not alone. We've all got unfinished home projects, but there is an easier way. Thumbtack is the app that makes it easier to care for your home. Pull out your phone and in just a few taps, search, chat, and book highly rated pros right in your neighborhood. Download Thumbtack and start caring for your home the easier way. Achieving a gorgeous grin from home isn't a total mystery with BiteClear aligners. Just don't be surprised if all of your sleuthing friends start asking, what's your secret? Begin by ordering your at-home impression kit today for only $14.95. Bite Clear Aligners are doctor-directed and delivered to your door. Treatment costs thousands less than braces. Plus, they offer flexible financing, accept eligible insurance, and you can pay with your HSA FSA. Get 80% off your impression kit when you use code WONDERY at Byte.com. That's B-Y-T-E dot com. Start your confidence journey today with Byte. We begin with an update on the deadly crash on I-465 that resulted in a nine-year-old boy's death. A state police report places the blame on the driver of the semi involved in that crash, 24-year-old Dayus and Laron. Our IT mate uncovered the report, which states Laron changed his story. Police say Laron initially told them he was entering 465 eastbound from the on-ramp. But later, he told state police he was already on the highway when he caused the crash. IT mate also looked into the history of the company he was driving for and found that Illinois-based Forward Aid to be Incorporated has 15 trucks and 15 drivers working for them. Over the past two years, their trucks have been involved in 10 crashes, not including the fatal on I-465. In that same time period, their trucks have been inspected 30 times. 50% of the time, the inspection forced that truck to be out of service, which is higher than the national average. In the last two years, their drivers have been inspected 85 times. Six of those inspections forced a driver to be out of service, which is also above the national average. Stats from the FMCSA does not say if Laron is one of the drivers who previously failed inspection, but Indiana State Police said that Laron had not followed regulations for driving hours at the time of the crash. In other news, Indiana businesses are being warned to get illegal cannabis products off of their shelves. Federal law allows stores to sell cannabis products which contain less than 0.3% of Delta 9, the chemical in cannabis. But state police say they have found products for sale in Indiana over that limit. We reached out to the Vigo County prosecutor about the matter. This is what he had to say. Just take a listen. I personally felt the fair way to deal with this was to send a letter to all the businesses and advise them of the attorney general's ruling and to advise, give them some time to get these products off their shelves. The Marion County Prosecutor's Office tells us there are no investigations into THC retailers at this time. A Clark County daycare worker already in jail for a child's death has now been charged with breaking a baby's leg. State police say 35-year-old Brittany Baylor faces the new charges after parents of a two-month-old noticed the injury. Police say Baylor had been watching the child at an unlicensed daycare at a home in Jeffersonville back in February. Baylor was arrested in June on neglect charges stemming from the death of a five-month-old whom police say had been in her care. That child died two years ago. Let's talk sports. The Fever is focusing on limiting turnovers as they prepare to return to the court after the Olympics wrap up in Paris. The team is averaging more than 15 turnovers per game. Coach Christy Side says that number needs to go down if they want to make the playoffs. Offensively, we're averaging, what, 87 points? You know, that's really clicking for us. Now, our turnovers are something we have to really um, stay top of mind, and that's something that we've stayed top of mind these last few practices. The Fever return August 16th when they host the Phoenix Mercury at Gamebridge Fieldhouse. Former Lauren Central basketball star Kyle Guy says he is retiring from professional basketball to take on a new role on the court in familiar territory. Guy is joining the Virginia Cavaliers staff as an athlete development mentor 
and special assistant. Guy played three years in the NBA, but is best remembered for helping lead Virginia to the NCAA championship in 2019. In Indianapolis, two animal care workers are out of a job. They say it's because of what they were trying to do to protect animals in the city's care. News aide Kyla Russell spoke to the former employees and got a copy of their termination letter. My case is a public online platform that allows anyone to search any name for civil and criminal cases in Indiana. It includes information on charges, lawsuits, and orders. And it's what Kylie Fox used to make sure she wasn't putting animals into the hands of people with a history of abuse. Fox started at Indianapolis Animal Care Services about three months ago as an adoption counselor. It was standard policy at that time to search potential adopters in the My Case system for any previous red flag charges, especially related to animal cruelty. The rule was put in place in 2022 after the brutal hanging and stabbing of a dog who had been adopted out to an owner with a violent history. Searching on my case allows adoption counselors to see cases in counties from across the state. Their internal system only covers Marion County. Fox says that rule abruptly changed one day while she was on her lunch break. Within the first week or two of me being there, uh, they took away the my case policy. They argued that going to any home, no matter who it's with, where it is, whatnot, is better than being in the shelter. Fox says she didn't agree with the change, but went along with it and didn't check my case for quite some time. That changed when Fox learned a dog had been adopted out to a person who had previously had the very same dogs removed from their care for abuse just a few weeks prior. That is what kind of sparked the fire in me to keep checking my case um, because this animal went home with somebody who has a history of abusing animals, neglecting animals. Um, they were literally confiscated from them. Over the course of a few months, Fox looked into a few other potential adopters on my case. In total, she denied two adoptions because the person interested had recent animal cruelty violations listed in my case, but not in their internal system. Last Wednesday, as she was wrapping up an adoption, her boss called her into her office. Fox sat down and was handed this letter. You can see the brief explanation here. You've continued to search my case for background information, although you've been specifically told not to do so. She just said, you continue to check my case. You continue to check my case every time I would ask her to elaborate. Um, so that is very much what the adoption or what the termination was based around. Um, I asked her for a copy of my paper and she had the guy from HR follow me out. Moments after Fox was escorted out, Co-adoption counselor McKenna Chittister says she was called into that same office, handed a similar sheet of paper, and fired for checking my case. I asked her like what she has to back that up because I 100% support what Kylie did. I think my case should be a thing there, but I myself didn't physically check it. She chose not to sign the letter, fearing that would be admitting to having used my case to search certain names. I asked IACS about Fox and Chittister's firing. They sent me a statement saying they would not speak on specific employees, but that checking my case was discouraged as its use was problematic and could lead to biased and equitable vetting of potential adoptees. Both Kylie and McKenna said they'd love to have their jobs back, but most importantly, they hope the my case case policy is reinstated. Reporting here in Indianapolis, I'm Kyla Russell for Wish TV. WishTV.com or follow us on Facebook for updates. The Wayne Township Fire Department says it is the first in the nation to install safe haven baby boxes at all of its firehouses. Four more baby boxes were dedicated yesterday. The fire department hopes the boxes will be a judgment-free way for parents to surrender a newborn safely. We don't want someone to think at the last minute, oh, I've been seen, I can't do this. If they're, if they're surrendering the child, it's, that's already tough enough. So go ahead and surrender the child and let us take care of it. And we'll, we'll, we'll have a press conference after that as an announcement strictly to the parent. Your child is safe. They're with us. You're, you're brave. You did the right thing. Uh, and, we'll, and we'll take it from here. Safe Haven says there are now 137 baby boxes across Indiana. When it comes to the weather, StormTrack 8 says things will look a bit different than yesterday. It will be warmer and sunnier, and we're in for a stretch of it. Meteorologist Marcus Bailey has your News 8 Daily 8 forecast. So I do think it's going to be a little warmer today, but humidity's not bad. It's going to be kind of your standard early August day. And then 
really beautiful weather settles in just in time for the weekend. So hang in there if you don't like the higher temperatures. But the summer heat will continue. 63 in Plainfield and Fishers and Greenfield. And again, there's a little bit of cloud cover out there this morning, but not nearly as much as what we had to deal with yesterday morning. 62 in Lafayette, 65 Kokomo, 63 Muncie, 65 Columbus and Bloomington, and 63 in Richmond. Overhead, big picture here. We are kind of sandwiched between two systems. We have Debbie, which made landfall again as a tropical storm in the Carolinas, South Carolina specifically overnight. A lot of rain in the Carolinas this morning. And then we're awaiting the passage of this cold front. That will happen tomorrow. And that's where the cool, dry Canadian air is residing up in the northern plains. We'll tap into that tomorrow. Out ahead of that, we're still on the warmer side. It's still a little humid, but it's not as bad as earlier on in the week. And Futurecast is going to keep us pretty quiet. I'm going to go mainly sunny. There'll be a few clouds from time to time. But overall, we're going to be in pretty good shape as we roll ahead through the afternoon hours. 77 at noon, 86 will be your high. Again, humidity tracker keeps us somewhat in the uncomfortable range, so you will notice the humidity. But by tomorrow and beyond, we're going to be well below that line. Really comfortable air settling in, and it could be here for a little while. We'll talk more about that here in my Storm Track 8 forecast coming your way in just a few minutes. To get a peek at the full forecast, just head over to wishtv.com or you can download the Wish TV Storm Track 8 app. And don't forget to check out our Storm Track 8 weather blogs. And we wrap things up with a pretty sweet story. This morning, the Girl Scouts are hosting their fifth S'mores on the Circle event. Organizers say that seven local chefs will whip up gourmet campfire creations like cheesecake, French toast, and cinnamon rolls into the traditional s'more. It starts at 11 this morning on the southeast part of the circle. The s'mores will run you about $6 a piece, and all the proceeds will go towards the Girl Scouts. This has been your News 8 Daily 8 podcast for Thursday, August 8th. I'm Jeremy Jenkins for Wish TV, wishtv.com, or follow us on Facebook for updates. This is the News 8 Daily 8 Podcast, a Wish TV News 8 update on demand. For even more, on demand and on the go, connect with Wish TV on Facebook at wishtv.com and on the free Wish TV mobile app. Thank you for listening. And be sure to like, subscribe, and follow this podcast for updates every weekday morning on the All Indiana Podcast Network and wherever you get your podcast.